Hello and welcome to episode 46 of Hack Attack with me, International Master Tom Rendell, where tonight we're going to be hacking up some lovely folk on chess.com. going to be playing lots of blitz and bullet action here, and uh, John's going to be coming on during the break, as usual. And uh, we have a new feature uh, starting from tonight, which is... Uh, me and John will be taking on the relay of the uh, of the month and the moderator of the month. So I'm actually going to be starting off tonight with uh, some a little mini match against JD Cannon, aka Jonathan, um, and yeah, gonna gonna challenge him to some five two games right now. Let's see if if we can get this going. Just gonna send that out now. I do see he's logged in and in the live arena, so hopefully. We can get this started straight away. Um, yeah, so we've been uh, looking to play some some more slow time limit games. Uh, so yeah, this is a, the perfect opportunity. And yeah, so yeah, I believe JD Cannon was instrumental in relaying a lot of games this month, uh, some like sixteen or so. Uh, anyway, so uh, so yeah. I'm just going to say good luck, have fun to him. And... Oh! I should probably play a move. I'll go 1e4. I could have come up with a more interesting move, but um, but yeah. e4 will have to do. Going to be playing a best of three. Ooh, and we see a centre counter. My opponent says good luck as well. Fantastic. And he takes that off. Well, ooh, that queen's a bit of a target. We could hit it with the knight... Oh, we can play knight f3 and play it kind of a little bit more slowly. But no, we're going to bring the knight out. And we're going to play a strange little variation against this uh, Scandinavian. We're going to play the pawn to d3, I think. I'm just unsure as to the right move order. I think it's d3 straight away. And then maybe a quick bishop d2. Don't really know the theory on this line. But the idea is that uh, the pawn can sometimes be a target if it goes all the way to d4. So we just keep it a little bit further back. And uh, hopefully that doesn't give my opponent a target. Now, at this slightly slower time control of 5-2, which I believe is the, the slowest we've ever done on Hack Attack, this should give us a little bit more time to actually analyse a few variations in advance. Um, and... I'll do my best to try and explain a few things uh, about what I'm thinking and how I'm uh, going about choosing moves. But if you've got anything you'd like me to, to do at this at this slower time limit, then absolutely just let me know. Uh, you know, if you can keep an eye on the... Uh, if you can sort of let us know in the chat, or you can tweet it directly to me, at T.E. Rundle, or to John, my producer, at Hong Kong John. Anyway, bishop f5. Let's get back to actually thinking about moves. I kind of want to go queen f3, but probably because I'm a very feeling very aggressive. Bishop d2 kind of makes a lot of sense. Knight e2 makes a lot of sense. I don't really have that clear an idea which move is best. So we're going to play none of them, and we're going to go knight f3. And kind of queen e2, knight e5. Yeah, I'm definitely showing the fact I don't really know this opening as well as I could. Um, so, normally black plays c6 in these positions, so the queen can drop back to c7. Uh, but e6 is, of course, very sensible as well, just allowing this bishop to come out. And I think the idea is that I can now castle queenside. So queen e2, bishop d2, castles, and then maybe knight e5, g4, and generally launch things down on the king side. So, yeah, that that's why it's very, very risky for black to ever castle kingside in these positions. If you see white playing like this, and you're a Scandinavian player, my advice is find some way to castle queenside. You know, c6... Knight bd7, queen back to c7 in some positions, castle queen side, and your position is relatively safe. Because even if I do decide to castle king side, it's much harder for me to launch pawns down on that side of the board. Whereas I'm a little bit worried for him after bishop b4, 
because how is he going to uh, defend his king if he castles kingside? White just has this simple plan of knight e5, g4, bishop goes back to g6, then we go h4, h5, and we deliver checkmate very, very quickly. But okay, unfortunately we can't play all of those moves straight away. Because if we could, the game would be slightly broken. Now, do we waste a move playing castles? Do we waste a move playing a3? I, th I don't really feel a3 is a good move just yet, because... Uh, the pawn is pinned to the rook still. So we could castle and then go a3, but it's quite slow. If I play knight e5, what can my opponent do to prevent g4? He could play a knight to d7, and then I take take and go g4 anyway. He can play knight e5, I take take and do something. Let's play this move. Let's be really direct and say, if you don't find a good answer to me going pawn to g4, bishop g6, h4, h5, I'm going to win this game. Gone is the moment that black can simply take it slow with c6. The clock is on, and I'm not just referring to his time ticking down up there, which is down to 2 minutes 42, as you can see. I'm referring to the amount of time he has in a tempo sense in order to uh, do something before a rather strong attack hits him on the king side. A hack attack, if you will over on this king side. Now, I think my opponents realise that this move g2, g4 is coming in. Now, if I was black, I'd probably go knight c6. I mean, okay, white has some advantage after knight takes, pawn takes, but I'm not going to be able to go g4 straight away. I mean, I could go f3, g4, h4, but that's noticeably slower and less effective. So, as much as I like my position, I think if he plays knight c6, he's only a little bit worse. Knight d7 I liked less, because I thought I could take this and play g4 anyway. But let us see. So we go g4. I think maybe his idea is to go bishop g6, and after h4 meet it with h5. And his queen defends the pawn on h5 laterally. So, maybe things aren't all so clear. But after h5, I'm just going to castle. h6. I mean, maybe that's a good move. Maybe it's a good move. I can win a pawn with bishop takes there. But that's precisely the kind of pawn that I'm not going to take. I could go h5 and g5. But you know what? We've got this uh, g4 move in that I was so keen on. Now we're going to get our king to safety. Uh, maybe avoid a little queen swap with queen e5. Now, now that's not going to be a pin. And now once finally li uh, lines get opened up with h5, g5, I'm going to have two rooks in order to attack on the king side instead of one. Uh... So yeah, let's see, c6, very, very sensible kind of move. He's getting ready to go b5 and then something. But I can't help feeling that, that this is going to be slow. Well now, well now, well now, well now. Again, bishop takes e6 was kind of fun. But I am after more than just a dodgy pawn grab. I don't know why he's thinking here. He's got to play bishop h7 and play it quickly. Uh, really important skill in blitz chess is, to, is just to know when you have to make a move straight away. Uh, he's going to end up playing bishop h7. I know that. In, the, in his heart of hearts, he knows it too. But he's just procrastinating, prevaricating, and generally... Waiting, and then playing bishop h7. And he could have had an extra 30 seconds there. I bet you within the first second he thought bishop h7 is my best move. And then he started looking at something else. And that was half of his time. Half of his time on this move. And I tell you what, if he ends up losing this game on time or making a mistake because he's short on time, we'll come back to this moment and I'll say that's probably where it went wrong. 
Okay, now I can bring a rook to g1 or I can play g5 straight away. Both look fun. You know, I think this move is slightly stronger. Just because he doesn't have a good answer to g5, he can't exactly stop me with f6. Okay, now we at least play b5 instantaneously. And okay, he's picking up the pace now. His last two moves have definitely been good. But here's the question, guys. Is it too little? Too late. We're going to find out. He's going to take this on b3. If a takes queen a1 knight there, I think my king is completely safe. I mean, it's only a check, guys. Only a check. And I guess on the, the plus side, the qu knight would be out of the game. But what about his queen? Ooh, is he going to go b4 here? Feel like I'm lining up for some kind of bishop takes g7. Does that win on the spot here? Bishop takes g7, king takes. Pawn takes, king h8, queen e5 is not a good move. His queen's covering it. All right, back to the drawing board. Don't have a drawing board, really. Hmm. Takes, takes, check, king. Where's the mate here? Maybe my position should have a mate. Where's the mate? Queen e5 is so boring. I'm not going to play that. Let's go bishop e5. I mean, on the plus, plus side, I mean, he's got no big attack here. He's down to 20 seconds. Okay, we do have a two-second increment, so every move we make... Uh, we get an extra two seconds on the clock. Okay, he's taken that off. Rook takes f6. Bishop takes f6. Queen a1 check. King d2. Queen takes a1. Rook f7. Hang on. Rook takes f6. Bishop takes. I think wins. Queen check king there. Queen takes a1. Rook takes g7. King h8. Rook f7. King g8. Queen g4. King takes f7, queen g7, king e8, queen e7, mate. That, I mean, that that's like a forced line, guys. I'm sure. I mean, okay, it could be boring and play something like g6 here. But we're hoping that doesn't happen. I really want to see this line with f6. And okay, queen takes g5. I'm going to be a queen up. Oh, are we going to get this line? The queen's on pre. He's got to do something. God, he takes it. Rook takes there. King goes to h8. We give a little check. Are we going to take the three-fold repetition with rook to g7? No, we're not. We've got this queen g4 move. Look at this. It's the immortal double rook set game with queen g7. And that is checkmate. Queen e7. Yeah, that queen. It did a good job. It came around. Came around the back. Grabbed a rook. But where was it when it came to the defence of his king? It wasn't there, guys. And that is why you don't castle kingside in that line. Alright. Into game number two. I think we're going we're gonna to make this a three-game mini-match, whatever happens. Uh, okay, 1d4. Let's see if we can play something a bit more offbeat now. Uh, don't know, don't know. What am I thinking? Struggling for a move one. That's not a good sign. Okay, I kind of feel like playing a hippo. Also, it kind of uh, struck me earlier on that it'd be really cool to either get Irish pawns or give my opponent Irish pawns in celebration of St. Patrick's Day, which was a couple of uh, a couple of days ago. So, I've got a kind of idea for how I'm going to manage it in this game. Uh, it's probably going to be really bad. Okay, let's just get on with this for the time being. My opponent's going for a pretty aggressive setup. Now... Uh, if he knows what I'm what he's playing against, he should probably go f4 here, because uh, the key to playing against the the hippo is just to be as aggressive as possible with your pawns. Because it seems like it's a good idea to put your pieces on really far advanced 
squares because uh, they're not covered by any of my pawns, but they tend to get slowly pushed back. For example, if you go knight f3, bishop g5, then at some stage the pawn goes to h6, and the bishop goes back, and then the pawn goes to g5, and you get pushed back, and uh, it can all spiral out of control. So let's see how my opponent chooses to play this position. He's having a bit of a think. It's probably not that familiar with uh, with playing against this. I uh, wonder where he's going to go with his king. F4, like I say, is the move I'd play. Queen d2 makes an awful lot of sense as well. Maybe preparing bishop h6 in some position. h4! Oh, I love the aggression. Well, well, we can tell this guy's a fan of hack attack. Harry the h pawn. Well, I'm, I'm, we've got to give this guy some respect. We're going to go h6 or in order to meet h5 with g5. We might have to take evasive action here and not castle into his attack. Oh, I think, see, this is where things went wrong for my opponent in the last game. He castled into my kingside attack. I'm going to attempt to not make that mistake and possibly castle on the queen side. You know, maybe it's going to go horrifically wrong anyway, but... Uh, but we can but try. So g5. I'm fairly certain he's lining himself up for a little f4 here. I can kind of feel it coming. g4. Wow. Uh, I don't really understand it. Because now if I wanted to blockade things off with e5 then I could. But blockading is not my natural instinct in this position. Oh, uh, okay. This makes the game a bit more positional, but... This is now sort of an outpost. I'm going to call it a pseudo-outpost for my knight on e5. Because an outpost is a square that... Uh, a piece can't be forced away uh, from by a pawn. And for it to be a true outpost, there should be no pawn on f2... To, to hit this knight on e5. But I call it a pseudo art post because he can go f4, sure, but he's not going to get my knight to move because I'm just going to take it off. So, to all intents and purposes, I've got a knight on a strong outpost. Sure, he can swap it off, but I've got other pieces I can bring to e5 as well. And in the meantime, we've got our, our plan of going queen d7 and castle queen side, and then we're going to blow this joint wide open and... Uh, Get, get a little bit more hacking going. I don't know if we'll manage a double rook sacrifice in this game. But, uh, ooh, that's a peace sacrifice. I mean, the the guy knows his stuff when it comes to hack attack. You, you give up your pieces, and you push your h-pawn. And if you don't have a plan, you push a pawn, and you push a pawn, and you push a pawn. So, we're going to stop him pushing the... Ooh, if I go bishop there, he's going to go queen f6. Isn't he a sneaky one? Is he a sneaky one? He is a sneaky one. Uh, maybe this is more dangerous than I gave it credit for. Rook g8, h6, bishop h8. This gives, uh, gives his idea the respect it deserves. And it sets up some nasty little cheapos. h6, the move I'd really like to play. Oh, I can win his queen with knight f3. Knight takes f3, bishop takes c3 check. Pawn takes c3, rook takes. But that might even be rubbish. Because before taking back the rook, he can play pawn to h7. You know what? We... Even though uh, it'll slightly mess up with the uh, rhythm, uh, I'm going to try and go back and analyse... A couple of these games afterwards uh, before carrying on with the show because we've just had some interesting things now for instance I could take this pawn back but knight f3 knight takes hang on I'm what am I giving up I'm giving up a knight and a I'm giving up a bishop and a rook for the queen so I'm not actually winning all that much material okay knight d3 he plays a king move like king f1 and then I look a bit silly. Alright, we're just going to go back. And we can meet h6 with knight f7. It's under control, guys. Ish. I mean, how how under control is it? It's 
some level of under control. H6 as predicted. We run away bravely with our knight. Then he just goes queen h5. I don't really see that I've helped anything there. Let's just go back. Because maybe uh, g6 is a better square for this knight. Where do I want my knight? f7 or g6? Mm. If I go to f7, then I can meet h7 with rook g5. Okay, I quite like that. What's the time situation? It is... Two minutes versus two and a half minutes. Hmm. Ooh, I do like f4. That's a good move. That's why the knight was also sensibly placed on g6. So he's now taking control over that f5 square. If I go knight g6, he can go f5, and then I go knight f4. And that's a little bit ugly for him, actually. We're going to play this move. I mean, he can defend this with knight h3, but then I'm going to get my queen into the action, and I'm going to castle, castle the rest of me, uh, get my king over there, get the rest of my army into the game. And I think I'm weathering the storm, such as it is. Um, What to do, my opponent is thinking. Knight h3, do I have anything fun to play against knight h3? Well, nothing... I mean, I can take on c3, take on e4. Okay, he flicks in this move. That's very sensible. Rook g7. So the pawn has got all the way to h7. Unfortunately for my opponent, in order for him to choose a new piece, normally a queen, but not necessarily, it does need to get all the way to the 8th rank. And let's count the pieces I have controlling that. Well, I have a bishop on h8. That's doing the physical blockading. And then a knight on g6 and a knight on... Uh, f7. So I've got that square pretty much locked up. But what is this? He says, get away to my knight on uh, g6. So the threat is lessened. Now queen h4 would be a terrible blunder because that allows knight g2, four king of the king on e1 and the queen on h4. And netting me a cool queen. But I'm kind of expecting queen h2. That's the only square the queen can safely go to. Fortunately, my opponent is down to only 30 seconds. Even with two seconds increment on the clock, that is going to be problematic. He does find the best move, however. So he lives to fight another day. But how long can we say this for? So queen g5 is my instant reaction here. But then knight f3 makes things a little bit less clear. e5 is a little bit defensive. You know what? We're going to play queen g5 and meet knight f3 with queen takes g4. We can afford a little bit of counterplay here. If knight h3, we're simply going to lop it off. Because I think once we get this castles in, that is going to be when we can do the real damage. Knight f3 comes in as expected. We lop the pawn off. Now his material balance is his own... Oh, have we overlooked something? He gives an attack. It's check to the queen. Okay, you know what's better than check to the queen? It's check to the king. Can we go knight g2? Then the king goes to f2. And then after king to f2, we need a good move. And a good move is what we're needing and what I don't see. I mean, I can just move the queen to the side. What about knight d3? That looks kind of fun. But probably rubbish. Um, 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 um. Knight g2, king f2. Feels like there should be a good move there. But I just don't see what it is. So we go queen a... Oh, he's going to take the knight off if I move the queen. Ah, oh, this is not so simple. Knight d3. If king d2, then we go queen there. That's not convincing. Okay, we're going to play this move. And after king f2, we're just going to take. I mean, why, this is why we go a piece up, guys. So we have the luxury to give the queen back. The piece back, sorry. And, uh, you know, it was all about just being a couple of pawns up in this ending. So we do a little bit of swap a -rooney. Bishop still nicely covers all of this. Oh, sorry about that. There goes a knight. And that is going to be good knight, coincidentally. 
What should you do when you're material up? Well, you swap off until your opponent has no more material left. He's got to go rook c1 and try for some counterplay. Rook c1, bishop c5, b4. Ah, uh, bishop there. Kind of makes some sense, I suppose, but... Simply going to go after this pawn. And I'll have that one off. Thank you very much. And yeah, there we go. Uh, and yeah, we're going to come back and review this game in a minute. Uh, but let's go with one final game. Thanks, and I'll save one more. And then after that, uh, you guys will have a bit of a chance to challenge me. Uh, Going to be playing some 3-2, I think, just to speed things up a tiny bit. Uh, we played e4 last time. Mm, let's go back to what we were doing successfully three weeks ago. Yeah, we shouldn't forget that uh, it has been three weeks since the last show. Um... And that's because we've had other things going on, and that's fine. At least, I hope it's fine with you guys. Um, but that does mean that uh, there's going to be another hack attack next week. So, two hack attacks in two weeks. Aren't you guys lucky? Yes, you are. And I'm lucky too, because I get to be doing these fantastic hack attacks. And I'm in a really good mood tonight. Uh... Don't know if that's coming across in the games. Uh, but yeah, just really enjoying this. So yeah, as I was explaining three weeks ago, for those hardcore members, and I know there are a few of you out there, uh, Knights on the Rim are, uh, are spectacular. Um, it doesn't really rhyme. Mm, maybe someone can tweet to me and uh, improve upon... Upon the the thing thingamajig, uh, either that or I'll just sit here in silence and come up with some ideas myself. That that will be some entertaining uh, some entertaining internet TV. But actually. Uh, I tell a lie. Even Magnus Carlsen realizes how strong knights are on the on the side of the board, because uh, famously he played the the North Sea defense uh, in a few games. Which, for those of you who don't know, is I believe it's e4 knight f6. So you're pretending to play a normal alakine, but then after e5, instead of going knight d5, you play knight h5. Now uh, you shouldn't get you shouldn't be put off by the name North Sea defense because. I, my understanding is that uh, if you feel like playing this opening, you should throw yourself into the North Sea. But but that doesn't mean it's not a good opening, guys. That doesn't mean it's not a good opening. Uh, I think that the only way it could be improved is if you find a way of putting the other knight on the side. Because I think that's what Carlson uh, forgot to do when he played this against Michael Adams in the Olympiad. He only put one knight on the side. Now, see, here we've doubled down with knights on a3 and h3. They control all of these important squares. He doesn't know where this knight's going. Is it going to g5? Is it going to f4? Who knows? What about this knight? Back to c2 and some defensive duties, or into b5 to create some chaos in the opponent's camp. Even I don't know. And if I don't know, then... I don't know, and he doesn't know, and nobody knows, guys. Nobody knows where these knights are going. Uh, and it's important to keep those options open. So we're going to develop a bishop or a queen. We're going to develop another piece. We're going to develop another piece. I kind of like this slower time, time a bit. Because uh, the normal format for hack attack, as you guys are probably well aware, is Tom plays some three minute games. Tom attempts to do some hacking. Uh, Tom goes off in a bit of a tangent and uh, starts analysing some variations very occasionally or just chatting about random stuff or telling you about uh, a tournament or anything. And then, uh, then I look over at the clock and I see I've got 20 seconds left. And we go, right, that's it. No no talking. We're going to blitz out everything as quick as humanly possible. 
uh, which is about five times as quickly as John would play moves. Anyway, and uh, and then the the game ends in a mad panic, and we often miss the opportunities for interesting tactics. And all oh, the other thing that happens is that. My opponent's kind of giving me a good game, but gets very short on time. And of course, that's still going to happen at 5-2, but we do get a little bit more juicy content before we get to that stage. Uh, so yeah, it's not that we're not going to get down to absolute craziness, it's just we're going to get a few other things first. Okay, I'm feeling that I need to go F3 here. Just because, uh, I don't know, I don't, I don't have another plan. Let's go F3. Uh, you know, I should be telling you why it's a good move, so we're going to go with meh, it opens a line for the bishop, opens a line for the rook, and, you know, centre pawns are worth more than pawns to the side of the board. Uh, that's why you, uh, when given the option during a middle game, in general, you recapture with pawns towards the centre, and that just because... The pawn then moves closer to the centre and gives you more control over the centre. Now, if he takes with the knight, maybe I'll have some tricks with bishop takes and d5. Does this win me a piece? Okay, All right. We're going to try a piece of calculation here, guys. Bishop takes knight, pawn takes bishop. Pawn to d5, bishop takes f4. Crap, we don't win. Because we take, he takes, meh. Okay, that didn't work. All right, stage two. We take, and then we take, and then we go d5. Okay, that might work. All right, it, it at least gives us some sort of pleasant position. So he takes back, d takes e4, then d5 doesn't win a piece because of the intermezzo, bishop takes f4, threatening to take on e3 with check. So... Uh, ah, he plays the intermezzo before I thought he would. But you know what happens when you intermezzo too early, guys? That's right, you get desperadoed. With a check, which is also sort of an intermezzo, but it's its own special kind. Where a desperado is when you're going to lose a piece, there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, I had to recapture the bishop, and then I just lose the bishop. But before you drop the piece, you, in desperation, give it up for anything you can. Whether it's a pawn, whether it's just uh, a way of weakening up his game. And yeah, so here I get a free pawn that I wouldn't otherwise have got. And I get to bring his king to the centre. And, uh, yeah. This game is going vaguely according to plan. I've extra, got one extra pawn. But I have to say my opponent's playing pretty well uh, in this game number three. Definitely a closer fight uh, as we both approach the two-minute mark in this third game. And, yeah, we are going to have time for for one more mini-match. We might go a little bit late into the break, but that's fine. Actually, no, you know what? We're going to... Are we going to do that? Let's see how long this game takes, because I kind of want to have a quick look at a couple of these games. Uh, so maybe we'll save 3-2 for the second half of the show. Anyway, can we give checkmate in the next couple of moves? Well, the plan here is rook h4, queen d3, queen h7, queen h8. Easy peasy. Fortunately, I think my opponent is going to notice. So, well, we have to go queen d3 check. Uh, let's just see if he's going to go g6 or f5 or king g8. There's no reason to, like, work out what your best move is against all of the, them in a blitz game. Just play a check, wait for them to move, and then go, okay, what's my best move against that? Okay, rook h4, I don't really feel it. Let's just bring a rook over. You know what, guys? I'm starting to think this knight on a3 isn't on its best square. I mean, I'm not saying knights are bad on the side of the board. I just think it wants to be on the other side of the board, like h5. So how do we get the knight from a3 to h5? I mean, we can do it in... Uh, God, how, how many moves can it, does it take? Right, forget everything else. How do we get the knight to h5? We can go c2, e3, g2, f4, h5. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, but it's 6, because we need that. All the squares are covered by that. I mean, we've got b5, d6, e4, 
F6, H5, but I can foresee one or two problems with that route. All in all, I don't think I'm going to get the knight there. Oh, I could take the pawn on, on that square. Oh, the amount I want to go rook F6. I don't, it's bad that I want to go rook F6. It's got almost nothing to recommend it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's not a good move. Uh, doubling up your opponent's pawns in return for a rook, generally not a good enough trade. All right, we're going to... We're going to start the night off on its incredible journey. You know, you, you've you ever seen that, that film with, uh, what is it, a cat and three dogs? Or two dogs? And I don't know. It's, yeah, you thought that was an incredible journey. It's nothing compared to this night on the CT. In fact, the, the rest of this game is just about this night. I mean, there are there are clearly other ways we could, we could try and play this position. But that night that so beautifully and early came to a3 threatening all sorts of nastiness on the queen side is now relocating with devastating effect and my opponent better not lose on time before this knight finishes its journey so we could take a pawn but a it's a pawn and b it's not helping the knight get over to the king side so over to the king side we go hi ho hi ho off to the king side we go and back to b1. I, I thought I could move the, the knight again, but it would lose a queen and would be bad. Alright, I'm going to tell that knight to go away. And I'm going to threaten mate in 2 on h7. Subtlety is the name of the game here, guys. Look how beautifully this knight is suddenly placed. Now, I want to go g4 to f6. Or d5 to f6. I think he's going to take it off if it goes to either of those two squares, though. Um, oh, there must be some kind of beautiful way of winning this game. Knight f5. Yeah, it's all a bit rubbish. Let us continue the knight's beautiful journey around the board. Okay, not going to let you do that. There's a check. Get ye back in there and the knight continues its journey f4 it reaches don't really want him to take this pawn but if he does then meh we'll come up with something good so now we defend the pawn or do we take ah we've got to take you see that incredible journey a3 to c2 to e3 to g2 to f4 to g6 to hopefully deliver checkmate and unfortunately my opponent cunningly didn't take the knight off but okay we're peace up opponent is down to three two one and that that's it he's out of time but uh fairly soon it's all over here uh so i'm a piece up here and if he takes check king there do we have a mate well we go something like Rook here and then bishop to somewhere. It's going to be over. All right, yeah. Just going to say good games to my opponent and thanks. And uh, yeah, fantastic. Okay. What are we doing now? It's 39 past. We're going to the break in a few minutes. So, in a change to our normal plan, let us see if we can very quickly take a look at. I think game number two was the really interesting one there. So let me do that in view and analyze in live. I mean, the the analysis function on chess.com is just so wonderful. I, I can't... Wow, I have a lot of challenges on the right-hand side of my screen right now. It's a lot of challenges. Uh, apologies, guys. I will be taking games, uh, taking challenges straight after the break for three, two. Uh, so in a, in about twenty minutes from now, and I'll try and go a little bit later because I'm I'm in a good mood. We're going to play some some fun games. Uh, so let us take a look at this game. Uh, how do we flip the board? Uh, I do know how to do this. Oh, it's that you press the flip board command. There we go. All right. So this game started off as a hippo, and the idea is you just place all of these pawns on your third rank, and you know you go here and here and here, and it's 
you know, you're just ready to lash out and do fun things. Okay, and now G4 I didn't really enjoy. I think White should totally play something like F4 in these positions and take and take. And this is how you open up lines to have a go at your opponent's king. But instead my opponent chose G4. And now I think black's just very comfortable. And yep, so this is where we had the outpost with the knight on E5 and the peace sacrifice. I mean, totally white should just castle queenside here. And okay, maybe black's a little bit better, but nothing more than that. But okay, we we did see some interesting stuff around about here. But yeah, yeah, this was the moment where I was wondering about this line H6. And this is a really fun position because I can win a queen by force here. With knight f3, check, for king, the king, and queen. Looks terrible, doesn't it? And it is, but not for the reason you'd think. So he takes that. But then there's a this discovered check, followed by taking this queen. So, you know, we've won a queen. How bad can it be? Well, the answer is, after h7, pretty bad. Actually, h7's not that clear because of rook g8. So, just knight takes g5. And okay, because he sacrificed a piece, that means he's got two pawns and a rook for a queen. This pawn's kind of very dangerous. I could play knight here and stop it. But, uh... Yeah, I mean, this wouldn't have been terrible, but... It just seemed a bit unnecessary, given, given the state of play in the game. But okay, so he took, and then I was just a piece up. And it was all kind of standard from here. He won the piece back. But, uh, yeah, and then unfortunately he blundered the piece with knight d4, after which there's not really much else to say. Uh, knight d2 is probably his best move here, because e3 check, his knight can come straight back. And probably I just play king e7 or castle or something, and the rook comes all the way across there. And what's the material? Uh, four, five... See, yeah, here, black's only a pawn up. So, yeah, well, Putin did a really good job of uh, of making this messy, but unfortunately he was short of time, and after knight d4, that was about that.